everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Her Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Yellow Jackets, Episode 8, Flight of the Bumblebee. You guys, I just want to start with a disclaimer that whoever in the writer's room, whoever at Showtime came up with the title Flight of the Bumblebee, y'all are highly disrespectful, you not see in heaven, because after I had the episode in it, I was like, <gasps> that's why y'all call this Flight of the Bumblebee? Y'all are so disrespectful. Why are you disrespectful like this? But... Just to let you guys know, I do have a little cold because my kids got me sick, my god kids. And I'm going to get through this as quick as I can because I do have to go get a chemical pill and my face is going to be messed up. So I wanted to make sure that I recorded this before I'm out of commission for a week. I wanted to make sure y'all got this video, okay? So let's get into this week's episode. So the Suicide Squad, um, we picked up where we left off last week. We saw that Van's face got eaten up. I thought she was dead. She wasn't. Because she was in the previews. I'm going to go look at these previews. Y'all know I don't watch previews for nothing. I like to go into episodes blind. I don't really want to know what anything, like what it's about. Come up with theories. Because I just like being shocked in the moment. But the Suicide Squad starts burning Van. And essentially Van like wakes up. And she's like, hoes, like what y'all doing? And so they see that she's up. They roll her off. And I was like, see, y'all didn't want to check a pulse. Y'all didn't want to put some, put no one put your finger on your nose to see if you breathe. Like what? Misty, what are you doing? You supposed to be the paramedic. What are you doing? So she, she was like, really fire y'all. And I was like, girl, right? But aren't you in pain? Like what's going on? So we get a backstory on Laura Lee, which I should have known something was going to happen. Anytime they start out with a backstory on somebody. Well, I guess Lottie made it last week. But still, I should have known something was going to be up. So we get a backstory of Laura Lee, not really a backstory, we get a flashback. And Laura Lee is at Mary Magdalene's summer camp. And I didn't know how to feel about that. I was like, is this like Mary Magdalene, like the Jezebel? Like y'all tried to hate on her? Like, like, is this a summer camp for like Jezebels? But then I was like, not Laura Lee. And then I was like, so is this like Mary Magdalene? Like, yeah, y'all was out here talking smack about me and y'all needed to put some respect on my name. Because now what? I didn't know. I'm just going to go with the latter because I just like to always think positively. But we see that she ends up jumping in the pool and I was confused. I was like, now, bitch, your tall ass going to jump head first into this shallow pool. I said, was you trying to hurt yourself? And then she bumped her head and started bleeding. I was like, a dummy, just like a dummy. And so we see that they end up having to do CPR on her. And she sees this lifeguard. She's like, you saved me. And he was like, no, the Lord did. I was like, this is stuff my mama would enjoy. But we then go back to the whole team part. And Natalie ends up going to ask Travis, like, hey, you want to go on a walk? And maybe we can do some hunting. And then he was like, no, uh, you're better at it than I am anyway. I said, beesh. Are you this upset that she's more sexually experienced than you? Like, get your life together. At least you getting some. At least you getting some. Everybody else ain't even getting none. At least you got somebody that want to sleep with your raggedy behind. Talking about you better at it. Yeah, ho, I am better at it. But I still invited your raggedy behind to come do it with me. I'm sorry. I did just get very upset. But that really pissed me off. So, she walks away. And then, um... She finds Ben, he reading at the lake or whatever. And she was like, how did you convince like crazy Misty to leave? He was like, I wish it was my idea, but it wasn't. It was her. And then she basically says like, um, you like guys, don't you? Right. Because he was like, well, I don't I want you to know like me and Misty ain't got nothing going on. She was like, yeah, because you like dudes. And he was like, bitch, what? She was like, I know. And so that's why he had to call all the condoms. He was going to see his, I guess his little boo thing was coming too. Um, and then we find out like he's a writer he wanted him to actually move in with him into the city and I was like dang like you was like getting your forever person and then all this crazy stuff happened and now you're being stalked by Misty and so um, she ends up asking him like do you think Travis is gay and I was like that's this like I didn't say go that far okay and even Ben was like girl no he's like in love with you like he probably just got nervous and he just couldn't get it up. And I was like, like I said. So we go back to the Suicide Squad. I know I keep calling them Suicide Squad, but it was stupid anyway for them to leave camp. They was being dumb anyway. So they go back and essentially, there I go with essentially. So we go back to the Suicide Squad. They're walking with Van and Van can't walk. 
you can see that Vans like uh, everything is saturated in blood. She's losing a lot of blood. She's not doing too good while she's walking. And so um, she tells them like, hey, Ty tells them like, hey, y'all leave. Y'all go get help. We'll be right behind you. I said, I don't know what right behind you think it is, but y'all going to be a minute. And Ty doesn't want to leave her. Ty's already feeling guilty about what happened. Um, but we end up seeing that Travis ends up uh, running into Jackie and they start talking. Jackie get on my damn nerves. She's one of them people who feels like she's a goody two shoes and she's better than everybody. And so she can talk smack about everybody, but don't look within to see maybe what's going on with you. And so she started telling all of Jackie business how he she was with Bobby Farley, how she messed with trash dudes. And so, like, it's good that she's talking to somebody like you. But I was like, but you, he get upset because remember she said she only had messed with two people. And so he goes to talk to her and basically like, you lied. And then she was like, maybe it's good we didn't have sex because you would have just judged me. So maybe it's probably for the best. And then she, and then he like ended things and she was like, it's a good thing you could get things up because this would have been a lot harder. I said, now baby, you went in for the jugular as you should have. Cause I'm like, Travis, what does it matter? Like you're, those are your own insecurities that you're upset that she was with somebody else and you couldn't get it up. And that's why like you're upset right now. I, I don't know. It just bothered me. Just like, sir, somebody wants to have sex with you. Be happy. Be happy. Feel blessed. Okay, feel blessed that the Lord put somebody crash. Okay, in the wilderness with you and wants to give your raggedy behind some booty. Okay, Ugh. so then she sees Jackie and that it was like it was you, wasn't it? And then she and then she was like, F you. And I was like, she should have slapped the taste out of her mouth. Jackie, get on my nerves. I'm starting to understand why Shana did what she did. I ain't saying she right, but I'm starting to see why she did what she did. So we see that. Um, Misty and the others, they make it back to camp. They tell people what happened and they ask them to lead them to them. Um, they end up finding her. I almost passed out when they were sewing up Van's face. I thought that Van was going to pass out from the shock, but the fact that she was up and like screaming the whole time, I said, baby, this is too much for me. I got to tap out. I did have to pause and go get some water because I was just like, this is too much. You know, you know, you be watching something, you'd be like, this is too much for my spirit. It was too much for my spirit. It was too much. I wasn't ready for all of that. So, Ty is talking to Shana about her sleep issues, which I thought was cute because then we see why Ty goes to her in present day about her sleep issues because she was the one who knew about it. And she talks about how she blames herself because she's the reason that Van went in the first place. She's the reason that Van got hurt. She was supposed to be on watch. She was sleeping a damn tree. I don't know what the hell was going on. But we see the next day that... Laura ends up waking everybody and don't lie for anyone who watched Bad Girls Club when she started shaking stuff I thought oh Tadisha she was like I ain't gonna sleep because of y'all when she's making a pop now nah, y'all ain't gonna sleep because of me I was just like ma'am was it necessary to do all of this just to tell them about your plan you couldn't just wake up and wait for people to wake up on their own and be like hey guys now that you're up I was just like petty but we see that she ends up telling them that she wants to fly the dead man's plane. She's been studying the manual. She wants to go get help. And um, and they were like, Van needs medical attention. So then Jackie raggedy ass. Yeah, raggedy ass, like I said. She basically said she's not the only one who needs attention. And I said, well, bitch, who else need attention? Because if you ain't talking about yourself, you need to mind your business and shut up. Then she was like, Shana, tell them. I said, this bitch, if I was Shana, I would have reached over. I would have reached through everybody and just snatched her up. And then Shana tells them that she's pregnant. Missy tried to touch her. She was like, back off. That was the baby. You know, the babies can sense evil spirits. And so that was basically the baby telling her, don't let that hoe touch you. Don't let her touch you. Don't do it. Okay? And so we see that. Shana lady like Ben tried to tell Laura Lee no and then she was like what are you gonna do to stop me coach and I was like yeah coach what are you about to do you got one leg what you gonna do what you gonna do you still healing boo chill out talk about I'm the only adult here baby we all adults now okay Ugh. so Shana asked Jackie like did you really have to tell them she was like yes we have to get help for you and the baby and I was like, bitch, why don't you just tell her that you know already? And stop all this fakeness. Jackie really get on my nerves, y'all. 
I know y'all hope that Jackie's still alive, but she's getting on my nerves. I don't like all the high, high and almighty. Okay? He is who is without sin. Cast the first stone. Sneaking boys in your house getting fingered. So, um, they end up clearing off the plane. They clear off the runway, and then they hug Laura Lee goodbye. And Ben tries to stop her one last time. And she was like, this is my purpose. I said, okay, boom, I believe it. It's your purpose. Okay, the Lord gonna deliver you. So she was flying. She started waving. I said, bitch, can you focus on flying? You sit up here waving at them. You can wait. Like, you should, they hugged you goodbye. You don't need to be waving. So I'm like, okay, she finna, she finna do it. She made it back to future reference. And I was like, sis, do you really know how to fly this plane? Because, like, you kind of scaring me right now. And so... She started flying. She started talking to Leonard. Like, Leonard, we did it. But I was like, why y'all didn't clean off the window? Because I couldn't see through the dang on plane. I said, if I can't see, how you can see where you going? Then Leonard started burning up. And I was like, ooh, girl, roll the window down. Throw Leonard out the window. Girl, the whole plane blew up. And I was like, damn. Then I thought, wow. Y'all really named it Flight of the Bumblebee. Y'all really going to hell. Like, for real, for real, y'all going to hell. So, that's what happened at the end of the episode. But we still got to talk about all the adult people. So, Natalie is day drinking at her motel. She hits the drug dealer up for drugs. And Misty, crazy behind, is sitting there, you know, talking to the reporter lady. And then she sees what Natalie is doing. So, she runs over there. I think if she's going to, I think if she's going to sit up there and just, like, you know, flush it down the toilet. Misty just sniffs the coat. I said, girl, what? That's your thought process. I'm going to sniff the coat. I said, well, I'll be damned. Like, why are we doing this? What is happening right now? So Misty sniffs it. And then and she's like, I came here. Like, I came here to save you. And then she was like, no, you didn't give me my money. She's like, I'll bend on you the money. She's like, but I couldn't sit here and watch you ruin your life. Then that was like, hold on, wait a minute. Watch me. And then she looked at the owl. And then she smashed the owl. She saw the camera. And then she started going off on that old Misty. And I was just like, I would have, you, you just need to choke her out at that point. Because I don't know why. I'm assuming because she was drinking and stuff. But you needed to make the connection about the bribe too. So we see when Misty comes back. The reporter has the bird in her hand. She threatened to kill the damn bird. Misty was like, you ain't going to do it. And then she started squeezing the bird. She was really finna do it. And then Missy started throwing stuff at her. And the dumb reporter didn't let the damn bird go. I would have been like, homie, I would have been holding the... I would have been... She throwing stuff, I would have been taking that bird and swinging it. Now, I love animals, y'all. I don't want y'all coming for me in the comment section. But let somebody have me tied up, handcuffed. I would have been having back practice with that bird. So she goes up and she was like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want them to kill you. And then she comes back and she readjusts her stuff. She was like, are you hungry? Clearly she's having like a full-fledged breakdown, sweating, because I guess the effects are kicking in. But we see that Natalie isn't going to her narcotics anonymous. I was like, okay, girl, look at you trying to get your life together. Then she see her sponsor. And the way her sponsor reacted to her, she was like, oh, what you doing here? And I was like, ooh, I ain't never seen a sponsor look like that. So she goes and tells her what happened with Travis. And she was like, I actually believe you. I was like, okay. But the sponsor, I want to know what you did to the sponsor because she still looked like she don't care about what happened to Travis. She ends up asking her for help about helping figure out who closed the account. She's like, I can lose my job. And then Natalie blackmails her. And like, well, I can tell them how you was funding it, selling people's personal information, ho. And I was like, dang, this is why she don't like your ass in the first place. And so she was like, I wish I never ever met you. And so I guess we're going to figure out who was actually behind that. But in the meantime, Shana just, Shana not even sleep. Shana just don't care. Because her daughter finds Adam's ID in the house. And then she was like, girl, your daddy ain't no saint. Why you sitting up here trying to talk to me? He ain't no saint either. He can't even come up with a new lie. He keep using this inventory lie. But then her daughter was right, though. She was like, but how you messing with somebody that I can't even look up on the internet and find anything, ho? So her daughter was asking the right questions. She might be raggedy, but she was asking the questions that needed to be asked. So then she got Shana, you know, um, you know, she got her thinking. She still sounds stupid, but she calls the school that he said he went to with a fake name. She still got to work on her fake names, y'all. They have no record of him being there. And so her raggedy husband came home. 
who I know we think he's good, but he's still going to be ragging to me until somebody tells me what's going on. He brought her something from sex, which I thought was nice, but then he was like, I just wanted to make sure, you know, you're part of homecoming royalty because you're married to me. And I was like, yeah. So did he bring it to be nice or did he bring it because he was trying to make her look good for him to make him? Maybe I just hate him so much that I'm just thinking the negative, but the dress was cute. I ain't gonna lie, it was cute. He has a good taste. Did you have your whore? Did you have your whore go buy the dress for her? Huh. So, that really got me mad, y'all. I don't know why I'm so mad about this episode. So, <laughs> okay, so they're having family dinner. The doorbell rings. You know, she seemed fine, but Shana got real shook. Like, isn't Adam at the door? But it's Ty. Ty is there. She basically ends up telling her everything that's been happening with her sleepwalking, um, how she's afraid to sleep. And so I'm starting to think that did she bite Biscuit? Was the bite mark not her biting herself, but Biscuit biting her? If she had, like, I don't know. I don't know if she ate Biscuit, bit Biscuit. I don't know. She eat dirt, so I don't see why she wouldn't eat Biscuit either. But let me know what y'all thought about that. I don't know. That's just me just thinking. But... Um, her and Ty start talking and I thought it was really sad. It was nice for Shana to offer to help watch her sleep and how they kind of tied into what happened when they were teenagers. I thought it was really sad that Ty and Shauna, like, it almost feels like they settled. Like they had these people in their lives, but they were like, it's not, they don't make me feel like I'm it. And I really hated that for the both of them, but you can see why they understand each other. And so, you know, she tells Ty about the affair that she's having and, she ends up going to see Adam in his place and starts asking him questions. And she basically like, oh, I know you lied. And so he owned up to it. He said he dated somebody at the school, but he was there enough to know everybody. So it felt like he went, he stayed lying. And then talking about he got an older brother who's a colorectal surgeon, which they say lives. Okay, they really do. My colorectal surgeon, I appreciate you. But um, I still don't believe him. Um, but he wasn't going to a weekend get away to a cabin. I said, oh, hell no, you're not going to take my, you are not going to take me somewhere in a, in, no, you're not going to take me nowhere in the woods, in a cabin, I didn't watch too many horror movies, I didn't watch too much of Snapped, of 60 Minutes episodes, no, we are not doing that, and so, um, she ends up leaving, Ty ends up telling her wife what happened, and how she thinks she let Biscuit go, and her wife is like, we're going to get you help, but she was like, no, I really want you to go stay with your parents, She's like, I'm really afraid that I'm going to hurt you. It was a really great actor. Some great actor from um, her, um, Juliet, Lewis, that scene of her having like that breakdown. Um, but we see that sh at the end, Shauna finds a glitter in the closet and she thinks that it's Adam. And so she checks the safe. Let me know, did I miss something? What was in the safe? Because I think I might have missed that. What was in the safe? But we see, or what's like her diary and like, I don't know. Let me stop speculating. Y'all gonna tell me the comment section below. Y'all gonna get me together. She goes into Adam's house and basically say, who the F are you? But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm here for the theory that Adam is Travis's little brother. I'm also here for the theory that Jeff might have something new and maybe he not raggedy cheating. Maybe he got some other stuff going on. He's still raggedy, which, whichever way you look at it. But I'm excited to see. I hope in next week's episode we kind of get the revelation of what's going to happen. I haven't seen the preview, so I don't know what's supposed to happen next week. But yeah, this is getting good. It's only two more episodes. Like, what are we supposed to do in two, two more episodes? Like, are we already working on season two, y'all? Did Amoria stop y'all from filming? Like, I need answers. What are we going to do? What is going to happen? But they have me intrigued right now. So yeah. Those are my long ass thoughts. Let me go get this chemical pill, y'all. But those are my thoughts on Yellow Jackets. Episode 8, Flight of the Bumblebee. Still disrespectful for that title. As always, my name is Sharana from Payroll Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, bye.